everybody. So I'm going to take some time in this video to explain how I have organized our course on Brightspace and some best practices for how to find your way around each week uh, so that you know exactly where you need to go um, to find out what you need to do. All right. Um, so if you are watching this video, that means that you went to Brightspace and you clicked on our class and that brought you to the home page for our class. You should have noticed that there was an announcement over on the left side of your screen, um, a little video from me, and then um, an outline of what we're covering in week one. Then I instructed you to click on the content tab up above on the toolbar and that brought you to the content of the course, sort of the heart of the course, where pretty much everything is located. Once you clicked on content, you should have seen going down the left side of your screen a, a handful of tabs, as I call them. The first one was getting started. That's where we are now. So when you clicked on getting started, you saw a handful of sub tabs appear underneath it. The first one was course introduction, then meet your instructor, and then this one, how to find your way around, and then attendance and weekly deadlines, then a PDF of the course syllabus, and then instructions for using Google Docs. All right now, I want you to you know go through each of those sub tabs under getting started. Course introduction and meet your instructor; those are real brief. Just take you a couple seconds to look those over. Um, watch this video in its entirety. It's super useful. <laughs> Make sure you go underneath this one to attendance and weekly deadlines. Uh, there's like an 11 minute video there that has very useful information in it. Even if you've already taken an online course at ATA before, you still want to watch that video just to make sure you fully understand how this class works. Got it? Um, obviously, the syllabus is something important to take a look at. We will be reviewing the syllabus together in week one, um, but it's always there under the getting started section if you ever need to come back to it for any reason. And then the instructions for Google Docs, you don't necessarily have to look at that right now. Um, that's just there for anyone who does not have access to Microsoft Word. There will be a few assignments in this course that require a more formal um, way of submitting your work. Uh, so if you don't have Word, those instructions for using Google Docs are there. It tells you how to set up an account, how to use Google Docs, um, how to you know then upload them and things like that. And it's free. But that's just there under getting started. It'll be there the whole um, time we're in the class if you ever need to come back to it to learn how to use Google Docs, right? All right, what I actually want to focus on <laughs> is everything that comes after getting started. So I want to focus on the weekly modules, okay? We're going to go through week one together. I'm going to show you how everything works, where to find everything. And that's it. We're only going to go through week one together because once you understand how it week one functions, all the other weeks function the exact same way. So we only really need to go through that one week. Having said that, in order to follow along with me, <laughs> you're going to need to take the week one attendance quiz. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to see all of the lessons and sub tabs that I'm going to be referring to. So if you have not already done so, you're going to want to pause this video right now and then go to week one module, click on it, and the only thing you're going to see is week one attendance quiz. Click on it, go to quiz. It's a very simple true or false question, and I explain these attendance quizzes in the next sub tab on attendance and weekly deadlines. Um, but you Go ahead and take the quiz. It's a very simple, one true or false question. Once you submit it, then you're going to get to see everything else that's listed under week one module. Okay? So, pause the video and do that if you haven't already done so. Now, if you've taken the week one attendance quiz and you can now see everything listed under week one module, we're ready to move on and see how it all works. Okay? Now, the first thing 
you need to keep in mind before I start going through the module is you need to keep in mind how many credit hours this class is and how much outside work is expected for this class. This is a four credit hour class. That means you are expected to be in class four hours each week. You are also expected to have an additional 40 hours of outside work spread out throughout the term. So that also breaks down to four hours each week. So that's eight hours total each week that you're expected to work on this class. That Those hours aren't determined by me. They're not even really determined by anyone who is like currently on campus at ATA. <laughs> Those hours in part come from ABHES, our accrediting body, the people who look at our degree programs and monitor us and say, this is how uh, comprehensive your curriculum needs to be. This class should be this many hours with this much outside work. This class should be this many hours with this much outside work, and so on and so forth. So for this course, in order for us to provide the curriculum required by our accrediting body, we are expected to give you eight hours of work each week. If we were taking this course on campus, four of those hours each week would happen in the classroom. And then you would be expected to have a certain amount of homework each week. And you would know that, you would expect that. You know when you have a course, when you take a class, you know that you're gonna go to class and you're gonna learn things and do things in the classroom and that you're also gonna have homework each week. We know that, we accept this. We might not like it, but we accept it and we move on. We do it, we finish the course, done deal. But for an online class, it's a little more difficult because those four hours that you would normally complete in the classroom, you're also having to do at home on your own. And that can make it seem like this class is a lot of work. And I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's, it's only a tiny amount of work. It's, it's, it is work. <laughs> but having to do the in-class hours on your own plus the homework on your own, it makes it seem much bigger than it really is. It's the same amount of work that you would be doing if you were taking the course on campus. It's just tougher because you're having to do it all on your own at home. So try to keep that in mind as the quarter progresses. If you start to feel overwhelmed by this class and you start thinking it's way too much work, I'm not trying to say that it's not a lot of work. I'm just trying to help you keep it in your head why. Why it seems like so much work, right? Now, there are some things that you can do to sort of keep it straight in your head and understand how it's all functioning together um, so that you could see how it mirrors what you would do if you took the course on campus. Um, this class is always online. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I have it sort of um, laid out in a way that you could see, oh, this is what I would be doing if, I were ta if we were in the classroom, and this is what I would be doing at home on my own as homework. Again, you're having to do it all at home, but you can at least sort of see how to keep it separated, all right? Now, when you click on week one module after you've taken the attendance quiz, you click on week one module and over on the right side of your screen, you're gonna see an outline for the week. You know, so the first item on that outline says week one attendance quiz. You must complete this quiz in order to access the lessons and assignments for this week. 
the next item on the outline says syllabus review. Right? The next item uh, says uh, there's a video and a handout explaining the weekly journals. The next item shows you that there's a lesson on basic APA format, and so on and so forth. So that outline right there, even before you take the attendance quiz, you can see the outline for the week. It's the same outline that's on the weekly announcement on the course homepage. Okay? Um, but you can kind of see how much work is there each week. What you'll also notice, though, is that each item on that outline matches up exactly to the sub-tabs listed under Week 1 Module. So when you click on Week 1 Module, the first sub-tab you see is the Attendance Quiz. That's also the first item on the outline. The next sub-tab you'll see is Syllabus Review. That's the next item on the outline. The next sub-tab says Weekly Journals Explained. That's the third item on the outline as well. The next sub-tab under Week 1 Module is Basic APA Format. That's also the fourth item on the outline. So everything matches up exactly. When you click on a sub-tab, there might, it, everything that you need for that lesson might be right there. There might be sub-tabs within that lesson. It all matches up to the outline. The outline will tell you if there will be PowerPoints or videos for that lesson. You'll see it. Um, but it all matches up. And how to sort of think about it is once you take that attendance quiz, all of those sub-tabs are the lessons for that week. That is the material that we would cover in the classroom together if we took this class on campus. The very last sub-tab in each module are the homework assignments for that week. So if you notice, when you click on week one module, you look at the outline, the last item on the outline, item eight, is homework, and it lists all the homework assignments for the week. If you click on week one module and look at the sub-tabs, the very last sub-tab is week one homework assignments. You click on that and then you see each item that you have to complete for homework that week. Week one is going to look massive. <laughs> it's going to look like there's so much homework for week one. Um, but a couple of those items are very quick, simple things like letting me know that you read the syllabus. <laughs> Technically, it's an assignment, you get points for it, but you have to type one sentence for it. That's <laughs> um, one of the items is always going to be what you're supposed to read that week. But I always tell students, you know, I don't expect you to read each chapter word for word. The chapters simply reinforce the lessons in the module. It's just there as support for you or if you learn better that way. Right? Um, but so again, the chapter readings aren't like a big homework assignment either. Uh, so just you know, don't freak out by how many items are listed under the homework assignments tab. Some of them we would have done in the classroom, right? But for the sake of keeping everything in one general location, I have organized each module so that once you take the attendance quiz, all of the sub-tabs are the lessons you need to learn the very last sub-tab are the graded items for that week. Maybe some of them we would have done together in the, the classroom, but again, for the sake of keeping it all in one location, it's all going to go under that homework assignment sub-tab. And that's how it's going to work each week. Every week is set up the exact same. You click on the module tab for that week, you're going to see the outline over on the right-hand side of the screen. Once you take the attendance quiz, all those sub-tabs will appear. All of them are the lessons for that week. They match up exactly in the same order that they are on the outline. And then the final sub-tab in each module will be the, the graded homework items for that week. So it's, it's the same pattern, same format every week. But if you can just try to keep it in your mind that most of those sub-tabs are what we would do together in class, the lessons that I would teach you, and then you have your homework assignments. It makes it a little easier to understand why it seems like there's so much work for this class. 
because even though it's online, you are still expected to have four hours of in-class work each week and four hours of out-of-class work each week. So even though you're doing it at home on your own, it's still the same amount of work. I know it's harder to have to do all of it on your own, um, but you can do it. You will need to plan accordingly, right? That's why it's best, I, I say this in the, the sub-tab on attendance and weekly deadlines, it's best to take the attendance quiz like on Monday or Tuesday. That way you can see what you have to work on that week. You, you might not be able to get to it and start it until Thursday, Friday, Saturday, maybe not even until Sunday, but at least you'll know ahead of time how many lessons you need to get through and how many assignments there are that week. Um, and it won't be a surprise. <laughs> yeah. uh, you'll know ahead of time, as soon as the week begins, what you need to accomplish that week. And then you can plan it out on your own. Okay, I'm going to go through these lessons on this day, try to get this assignment done on this day, you know, so on and so forth. You do not have to do all of it at once. Even though the, the, the sub-tabs in the module are the lessons for that week that we would do on campus together, you don't have to go through all of them at once. You can go through one here, you know, here and there throughout the week. Everything is at your convenience. There are due dates for all of the homework assignments. The discussion each week is the one that you really want to make sure that you stick to. But I can accept the other items late if needed. Um, but you do want to kind of plan out when you're going to go through all of this. And it's whatever works best for you. But just keep in mind how those subtabs function. Those are the lessons. That's what we would cover in the room together. The homework assignments are listed last. Those are the graded items that you need to submit, hopefully, by Sunday night each week. Um, another thing that I would like, another piece of advice I'd like to give is go through each week in the order that I have them listed, the, the lessons. And also, don't just try to jump in and do all of the assignments well, without having gone through the lessons. The discussions each week, you can do those at any point during the week. You do not need any of the lessons in order to complete the discussion. But everything else, it would be best if you learned the material first and then attempted the homework. It's just like if you were in class. If you missed a class and tried to do the homework that was assigned for that class, it would be tough to do well on those assignments if you didn't also try to learn the material that you missed. <laughs> so learn the stuff and then try the homework. Again, discussions can be done at any time during the week. Another piece of advice I'd like to give is always go to your assignments from the homework assignments sub-tab each week. That way you know exactly which items are due that week because if you go over to course tools and you go to assignments, you might, you might forget about the discussion because the discussions are not listed with the assignments. The discussions are a separate thing. But if you go to the homework assignment sub-tab that week, you're going to know exactly which items are due that week. Um, it's just a, another way of ensuring that you don't miss anything. Okay? Um, that's pretty much it. Again, every week is set up the exact same. You want to go through those lessons. That's what we would cover in the classroom together. You want to click on the homework assignment sub-tab and access the, the homework items that way to make sure you don't miss anything. Um, the discussions, uh, you can do those at any point, but try to go through the lessons before you attempt any of the other homework assignments. That way you learn the material first, okay? Um, you'll get the hang of all of it. I try to make it 
student for me, I always try to ask myself if I were taking this course online, how would I want it set up? And I know that's not going to work for every single person. You know, we all are different. Um, but I really do try <laughs> to make it uh, student friendly, user friendly. But if you ever have any questions, if you ever get confused about anything, I am always here. Okay? Um, but I think you'll get the hang of it after the first week or two. Alright. Um, I think that's it for me. You guys are free to move on to the next thing.